Thank you so much, uh, Sunrise Daily team. Good morning. Welcome to Business Morning on uh, Sunrise Daily. I'm Ini John Mekwa. We'll do about 30 minutes of business before we head back to that uh, conversation and others that they have prepared for you. Now, let's start from the global space. Oil prices fell in early Asian trade hours on Wednesday after market sources said that data from the American Petroleum Institute showed an increase in the U.S. crude and fuel stockpiles, an indicator of weak demand. Responding to that, we see red color uh, on the board when we look at the numbers. We see Brent dropped 0.3 percent in that early trade in Asia and has lost that $83 level that it held yesterday, $82.95. And then for WTI of the United States, it's also a drop 0.2 percent at $78.25 a barrel. Data obviously is driving the market today. Official U.S. government data on stockpiles is due later on today, but both benchmarks fell marginally in the previous session on signs of easing supply tightness and the EIA updated its forecast for 2024. Now I expect world oil and liquids output to grow more this year than earlier projections and demand to also grow. But of course we also have that, uh, you know, the ceasefire talks in Gaza that have put pressure on oil prices and is still putting pressure. The U.S. believes that negotiations on a Gaza ceasefire should be able to close the gaps between Israel and Hamas. And U.S. Central Intelligence Agency Director Bill Bonds will travel to Israel uh, today, Wednesday, for talks with Israeli Prime Minister. Hopefully something will come out of that, but it's a red for the oil market this morning. Still talking about oil back here in Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria has released additional guidance on how international oil companies, that's the IOCs, can use their foreign exchange earnings. We have this uh, some months ago. Now it's an update. So according to that new circular signed by the director Hassan Mahmoud, director of trade and exchange departments, IOCs may immediately pull 50% of their repatriated export proceeds. The secular responds to inquiries from banks and stakeholders and also allows banks to request cash pooling in advance with proper documentation. Furthermore, it specifies that the remaining 50% can be used to fulfill financial obligations within Nigeria over a period of 90 days. Let's look at the Naira close for yesterday. Not a good one. Uh, red from the oil, red to the Naira is what we have. We saw NAFEM is back to 1,400. 1,416 Naira, 57 Kobo. Remember yesterday we're celebrating that little win one day again. But it's, uh, that, so it was at 1,354 Naira, just one Kobo. So for yesterday at uh, the trade, we saw that the Naira lost 4.60%. While on NAFEX, it lost 0.26%. But we know that this is where you have a higher part of demand. That's why you see more movement on NAFEM. So NAFEX, it closed yesterday, 1,403 Naira, 7 Kobo. Uh, I don't know if... We're going to be staying on the 1,000 focus. It looks like that's where we're settling, at least for now. Uh, not so good. Remember, I am still praying for that 700 Naira for a dollar. I don't know, I don't know if it's just a dream, but it's come to pass. But this is uh, what the Naira closed with yesterday. We hope it doesn't get worse than this at the close of trade today. Now, um, yesterday also the Corporate Affairs Commission announced a July 7, 2024 deadline for all major Nigerian fintech POS agents, including the ones you know, the popular ones, and not and the not so popular ones. Well, the Registrar General uh, Hussein Magaji uh, stated this uh, and follows an agreement that they reached with the operators and companies complies with the Central Bank of Nigeria's regulations. The decision was confirmed uh, at a meeting in Abuja. Mr. Magaji says, uh, stress that the action is equally backed by the law, Section 863, Subsection 1 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama 2020, as well as CBN guidelines of agent banking. Well, let's uh, drill more on this. I guess this shouldn't even be a uh, big conversation, you know, uh, a POS, I mean, if you're doing business in Nigeria, you ought to be registered with the CAC. But let's, let, let's drill down on this uh, and see the realities of it. 
with uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Ecosystem Limited. He's also the President, the National President of uh, Association of Mobile Money Agents in Nigeria, Amban. Uh, we have uh, here joining us this morning, Mr. Atunda Fashasi. Mr. Fashasi, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my viewers. Yeah, so I mean, this shouldn't be a big deal. <laughs> Every business operating in Nigeria should be registered with the CAC. Yeah, yeah. So what's the big deal? Why is, why is this uh, getting this reaction? Honestly speaking, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but few things actually made it a uh, big deal. We believe in the segment, market segment, segmentation. Uh, today, you cannot expect um, uh, nano businesses, you know, you can't force them to go and register. Uh, pepper sellers, you know, cobblers, you know, they are, we also have that category in agency banking. So they need to really have the understanding of the structure. Uh, even going by the agency banking policy regulation that they refer to of the Central Bank of Nigeria, there are categories of agents, I mean, segmentations. So you have um, uh, super agents, uh, a lot of them are corporate organizations. They are already registered with, uh, with uh, CSE. So you have a sole agent also who are directly attached to financial institutions. Most of these guys are registered already. Um, I think um, if, uh, that is why I'm surprised that it's uh, attracting so much attention to the extent that the CSE is signing agreements with some selected service providers. Anyway, um, I see everything in Nigeria as a cash out. You know, it can be a business that we don't understand. So if they are looking at that figure of 1.9 million agents in Nigeria as being unregistered, it's a fundamental mistake. Because when you get to the feed, you understand that over 80% of them are actually sub-agents that are, they are just like bank branches of mega banks in Nigeria. You can't expect the GT Bank branch in the Cote d'Ivoire to go and register with CAC. So when you are looking at that figure that uh, you are not you know, putting calculation of revenue into it, it's going to be shocking to them that it's a, it's a fundamental blunder. But in terms of registration, I think uh, the due people are registered, uh, due agents are registered already, except we want to enter Ladipo market and start asking one shop owners of uh, selling pepper to be registered with CAC. That is when you can now go down to the rural agents that are only operating with a single location. And these are sub-agents of registered uh, agent network in Nigeria. If you ask them to provide their CAC number, they can provide it. So it shouldn't be a big deal. But, but Mr. Vashas, can you assure us as Nigerians, because you know there's been allegation of some fraudulent uh, people use POS to carry out some fraudulent uh -huh. to dupe people, you uh -huh. know, all these strange messages that people do get. Uh -huh. So can you assure us that every single POS operator we see is a sub-agent? You know, I mean the very the nano ones, uh -huh. that they are sub-agents. Because I do know that Amban also has a task force, yeah, very well. you know, and, and I'm sure that I, 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 I know when you did your outing is some uh -huh weeks ago mm. you did meet some people that are not registered and you so yeah. so i mean you would agree that there are some people that are not mm. captured mm. in the official mm. structure mm. You know, that are still operating mm. Mm. i think um that's an angle we should look at it when i i, I we read about the the reason why cac is more interested is about fraud prevention and and i look at it that uh, you can't do cac registration to prevent fraud for God's sake. So, and it's the responsibility of the Inspector General of Police and DSS and all other sectors, you know, to actually prevent fraud, not CAC. So it's a misplaced of priority. So we are having this conversation with uh, IG already and Director of SS will be having a meeting next week on how to curb human related frauds among the POS agents. It's not about CAC registration. And um, a lot of uh, industry stakeholders are doing a lot in fraud prevent prevention at agent location. Recently, Nigerian Tabak Settlement Scheme, uh, NIPS, actually uh, activated a fraud uh, you know, reporting channel in, their, in, in all POS channels. So, so a lot of us are working around how to curb fraud. It is not for CAC to say until they So you're saying the there's really no need, or perhaps the motivation behind yeah. the CAC announcement yeah. is not... It's not. It's not genuine. We, they need to come out and tell us... But are you having conversations? Time. I mean, they did say that they signed MOU with some operators. A lot of people don't really understand this industry we are. They had meeting with uh, fintech companies. 
uh, the whole pay, the money points, which are established institutions. They already registered with CAC. They don't have issues. So they excluded. They, they have forgotten that there is an entrepreneurial segment in our business. Who are those POS agents that you see outside there? The only umbrella body for them is Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, AMBAN. We are the only one that can speak for them, not service providers. And you are the national president, so we can hold you of accountable course, to whatever. Of when the CAC if anybody also. gets yeah. duped by, yeah. uh, through POS operators, Mr. Bashazi, I will hold of you. Of course, we have whistleblowing uh, uh, channel now. We have also issued out verifiable identity card because security actually starts from, you know, identity verification. Today, approach anybody handling POS, ask for their, you know, unbanned identity card. You will be able to verify it and report any fraud. So that is the way it's operating, you know, operating. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, yesterday we also, okay, it, it, it's the circular from the CBN yeah. on uh, the cyber security mm. levy actually came out two days ago, but uh, it was late. Yeah. So yesterday it, it was news everywhere and, and all of that. And I, I think there's, we have some slide. Yeah. You're already ready to make money from this, Mr. Fasha. This is not fair at all. Okay. This is not fair okay. uh, for, for you to already, mm. you have already given us what it will cost us. Yeah. You know, when, when we look at the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very well, very well. This, this I, I was think, too fast because uh, yeah. if it was a reduction, yeah. I am almost sure yeah. that by now we would not have seen <laughs> this out. But because it's where you guys will add yeah. more money, yeah. we now see, we now yeah. see that you already have a list. Uh, actually, that list is not from us. That list is actually for public enlightenment. That, uh, <laughs> from who? From, uh, uh, no, from our own understanding of things. It's not the charges. We are not referring to the charges of POS agent. We are referring to those charges that are currently being charged by the federal government. Uh, you have stamp duty. Stamp duty, 50 naira, uh, I mean, now being charged, you know, from 10,000 and above transaction. So mm. these are the statutory charges that are ongoing. Okay, we're, so we're, you're saying that, uh, I mean, this, uh, the, the cyber, cyber security level is supposed to start from the 20th, mm. uh, because it's two weeks from the 6th. Mm. So if somebody wants to, already I think how much, I know about 20,000 Naira, if you want to withdraw 20,000, you pay about 500 or 400 mm. Naira, mm. then that means you will now add like five Naira. This is additional cost uh, for the cyber security, uh, based on the circular of uh, Central Bank. But if we are to go by the, by the, by the Cyber Security Act itself, it's stated that uh, the charges of 0.5% should be on the charges, you understand, on the charges of electronic transfers. Uh, the meaning of that is if electronic transfer is costing 20 Naira for you to move money, you know, so 0.5% of 20 Naira, that is what that policy states. But unfortunately, the CBM memo is saying another thing. The CBM memo is actually factoring 0.5% of the value of transaction. That will be huge and that will be killing. So the analysis we have here is based on the I mean, CBN. There is a need for us to also reach out to the CBN and, and ask questions. We can go and look at that Cyber Security Act, look at what it said. It's about the charges on electronic. You are levying the charges. You are not levying the value of transaction. They need to go back and look at it. We are, we are, we are, we are responding because the memo is actually coming from uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. If it's from other agency, we won't be concerned. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, even, even as a media station, I yeah. mean, the report that was put together, I put together yesterday, we also did ask some of those questions. Yeah. Um, the legality of it, yeah. who is supposed to implement it, what exactly does the act say about who should implement it? And the, from the act, you also see that it's about five businesses, yeah. not every transaction mm, mm. that is supposed to be involved. So, but I, I believe it's an ongoing conversation I, I, which will get clarity on Thank you. Uh, I, I think our civil society need to actually wake up now because most of these policies, most of these bills, nobody was aware. We need to go back to the Senate and House. What are the implications of all these acts before they come to the limelight? We, we shouldn't be shouting now if we have done the right thing at the policy level. Because if you look at it today, um, the so-called cybersecurity, there's a provision for it under NASENI, Nigerian Agency uh, for Science and Engineering Infrastructure. You know, there is a provision for anything infrastructure in NASENI, which is 0.25% 
of the uh, revenue from the companies. The banks are paying it. They are paying 0.25% of the profit before tax. You know, and it is about infrastructure. Why should we also allow another levy to pass through our city and our house of rep? But everything that is being charged today is coming back to the common man on the streets. Because we are businesses, we will transfer that cost. There is no doubt about it. That was why it, is, it was actually easier for uh, service providers, money point to pay, to enter an agreement and sign off. Because they are not going to bear that cost. They are going to transfer it back to the common man on the, on the street. I think it's a challenge to the civil society to wake up and start asking questions. What has, have we done with the stamp duty charges? That is even more. Do we even have account for it? Can they even account for it? It's enough to settle all our challenges in Nigeria. All right, I mean, uh, Mr. Fashas, I'm supposed to let you go now, but just before you go, briefly now, yeah. we don't see money at our ATMs yeah. anymore. Yeah. The money now seems to be with um, uh, POS. Yeah. And the story going mm. around is that banks sell mm. cash to mm. POS. Mm. How do you react to that? Okay, it's actually, uh, let's give a dog a bad name in order to hang it. Uh, anybody with that fact of uh, that such transaction should come out. The, the reality is we have over 3.8 trillion cash in circulation. It's not that there was no cash in circulation, but people are not bringing their money back to the bank. They are not depositing. Go and look at the bank books now. They are not receiving. So cash are now exchanging hands at agent location. So my mama and my baba, they prefer to come to agent location to come and deposit cash. That is why you have availability of cash at agent location, not at the bank, because they are running away from all these charges. Imagine if you deposit above 500,000 Naira as an individual. The policy of CBN is insisting that they must charge you processing fee of 2%. If you are a corporate organization deposit 3, 3 million, you are supposed, you have, you'll be charged 3%. It was just yesterday night, CBN quickly postponed the implementation till November again. But the reality is that we need to reconsider all these exclusive policies. Policies that are pushing people out of the banking system. There is a need for us to sit down and think about it before it's too late. You can see the figures. They are crashing every day. Uh, you'll be shocked when a final report on financial inclusion is out. You'll be shocked that we may go back to the olden days of 30%. Wow, that would know, be sad. I think we are at 70% now. That's for the rural, for the, I mean for the no, urban. For the general. We have 76% as of today. So, um, and, and uh, no, not even as of today, as at the last FINA report. As at the last FINA report, uh, but yes. That was before the introduction of most of this new policy of the CBN of about uh, linking your BVN and NIN to so, the account. So, A lot of <laughs> accounts, over 2 million accounts have been locked out because of lack of BVN and, and NIN because they are not available. Uh, NIMC has shut down most of the agent locations. You know, you hardly, you hardly, because they are in the process of revalidation. Up to today, they have been on, none of their half have actually worked at agent locations. So before now, ask, ask questions. What has been the figure of NIN enrollment between January and today? You will be shocked that we are, we are back to the olden days. There is a need for us to expand the access to most of these critical financial services before we come up with all these regulations. Access all right. cost. Thank all right, uh, Mr. Yes. Fashasi. We you. obviously have a whole lot to say. President, yeah. National President, uh, Association of Mobile Money Agents in Nigeria, in short, POS. Yeah, uh, POS operators. Yeah, POS <laughs> thank operators. you so much for your time. Mr. Mr. Me, all right. Okay, so now let's move to another conversation now. Um, Mr. Fashasi, we have to charge him for some extra time. Yeah. He did take our time there. Uh, looking at uh, what's going on in the food and beverages uh, industry, uh, we're going to be discussing with the finance director of Cadbury Nigeria PLC, Mr. Gaga Loge. Mr. Loge, uh, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, I know that POS conversation and then the cyber security also will affect you because it will affect when you pay for your airtime, when you buy petrol and, and, and all of that. Um, have you taken time to look at that or what have you heard about that cyber security levy? Good morning. Uh, good morning, at least first. Uh, I think um, I was listening to the conversation from the, the president. I think those are additional costs that will probably affect um, consumers because they'll have to bear that cost. Like I said, that cost will be passed to the common, common man. So and in terms and of and companies too and companies too, so that that would also increase our cost of um, cost of doing business. Mm. All right, so now we have seen uh, Cadbury's report pre-tax loss 28.2 billion full year 2023, a decline from 1.3. Um, is this all about the forex 
I mean, the loss yeah, that you recorded at, last year. If you look week. at the financials critically, even the one for Q1, you will see that um, we actually made an operating profit. So operating profit is actually the profit you use in running the business. But after operating profit, that's where you see the FX losses. So the FX losses, I think, for last year was about 31 billion. So which is which is actually what wiped out the entire profit that we made that year. Mm. And then uh, we saw PMI, standby PMI. We we saw a moderate increase, 51.1. Um, they said there were new orders. Do you feel that new orders? Can you tell us it's a reality that there were new orders? Talking about the PMI, the purchase. Yeah, I saw that report. Actually, we're hoping that things would get better. You saw the the FX rate now. It was I think six weeks ago it was a thousand one, a thousand two, but now it's a thousand four. That's also additional cost. And those costs, of course, for us to continue to make profit to run the business, you need to pass on those costs to your products. And once you pass that cost to your product, you have to take price increase. Whenever you take price increase, you know what happened to consumers? They had to step back because they have to actually check how much they have in the pockets. So I, I am, I'm hoping that we're able to get an increase because if you get an increase like Stambik is forecasting, it means that what we sell, the volume of what we sell will actually go up as well. But we don't see that coming in so soon because of the recent devaluation of the Naira. Because if the Naira stays at a particular level, I heard you said you were hoping to get to 700 Naira. I'm praying. Fact, I'm, I'm I will actually, not give I'm, up. I will join you in that prayer. <laughs> but once that happens, you just imagine the benefit that we'll see in, in, in most of the FMCG sector. Because once the dollar goes up, it affects our input costs. We have to bear that cost and, and pass that cost to the consumer. Otherwise, it will affect the quality of goods that we produce. Yeah, but if we, if we, if we uh, uh, try to make lemonade out of lime, wouldn't it be a good time to turn to uh, local raw materials as a way to cut off the impact of FX? So that, that's, the, that's the point. The local materials have an impact with, have an impact with FX. For instance, cocoa beans is planted in Nigeria, is produced from Nigeria, but the price of cocoa beans goes up if the dollar changes because the man will also want to export. If he's exporting and getting good rates from, from, from exporting it, why would, I, why would I sell to you at a loss? So in, in spite of whether it's a local production, the point is that it will have an imp the cost of produ producing that local goods has an impact to the FX. So if the FX goes up, you expect the local goods as well to also go up. So there's no way we can, you know, hedge around this FX with it's, it's difficult. Local. It's difficult because the, the point is that it's like you see inflation. Once you have the devaluation, it affects common goods, in the, common goods, common goods on the streets because we are an import-dependent nation. And even though the local man wants to produce locally, he also needs to get some materials. Some might be imported. Some might have import um, effects and um, impact on it as well. So that's why the, the issue is that the dollar and naira, we need to find our level. It needs to get to a state whereby you can actually plan well. Because how can you wake up one morning? It was one, two, all of a sudden it goes to one, three, one, three, five, zero, one, four. No one knows what's happening. No one knows what's causing that. So it's difficult for you to plan with that kind of um, that kind of rates going up and down. Mm. So uh, for the for the for your industry now, the food and beverage uh, industry, what do you see as? I mean, by the end of this year, uh, inflation. We're hoping that by the end of the year, before the end of the year, it will peak and then it will start declining. But what do you see when you look at the microeconomic indices and then uh, uh, the industry that you operate in? Last year was tough. So I think, I think you saw the results for most of the listed companies in the FMCG industry. Last year was very tough. So the losses we made from FX was huge. I think this time last year was about 400 and something higher. Then before the end of the year was about 900, 900, 1,000 higher. Now it's 1,400. I don't think it will get to that difficult situation we'll find ourselves. Because I think most of us were living in the fact that, okay, with 430, 450, it gets to 700, you're fine. But we saw the real rates, I think, in the first quarter of this year, 141516. But now at 14, the point is that I don't think we'll be in that kind of difficult situation we were last year. So I think most of us now will be, this will probably be like a recovery stage. For most of the issues we've had last year, most of the losses we've made last year, we need to now start running the business in a manner that it will be profitable or manageable. Because when you take pricing, it affects your volumes. So you just need to like, it's more of a like recovery stage that we are. But how, we are how do you recover when the Naira is even uh, less valuable than it was last year? If you see the Stambic report, they talked about the fact that pricing has gone up significantly. Off. If you look at the price of bread, 
this same time last year was about 500, 600. Now it's over almost 2,000 naira. So you, you have to take pricing to recover your cost. So once you're able to take pricing in a, manner, in a manner that you recover your cost, you should be able to stabilize the business. The point is that if the dollar continues to change rapidly, then it becomes very difficult because you can, you, once you continue to take pricing regularly, it affects the, the consumer. They'll probably just drop the product and find something else to, to consume, and that will affect your business. So I think what we're hoping is that we're seeing what, what, some of the reforms that the CBN is doing, and we're hoping that the Naira stays stable. If it stays stable, we should be able to plan, and at least that plan should probably help us stabilize the business this, this coming year. Yeah, but you, you know, a lot of businesses have also had to re-strategize cutting costs, um, you know, re-strategize their production and, and all of that. Isn't Cadbury doing something like that? No, everyone is doing it. Everyone is doing it. Because the point is that why will I have a factory that can produce lots of volumes, but yet I'm only getting about 10, 15 percent of it. So I have, to, I, have to, I have to cut the cost to actually match the revenue I'm getting. Otherwise, you'll be able to match your revenue and your cost. So I think everyone is doing it. I hope it. that's not affecting quality, though. No, that's, that's the point. For us, quality is important. Quality is very because the point is that if I begin to manage my quality because of costs, you won't even want to pay that price for the product. So the point is that quality has to remain. Otherwise, why are you buying those 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 products? All right, we certainly hope there will be a level of certainty, you know, in every industry, not just in the food and beverages. And we'll see better numbers. I know uh, the Q1 numbers are already out. Yes. And they're looking a bit better than, than full year of last year. Correct, yes. Uh, so we're hoping that full year of 2024... Will that be we have better. something to rejoice about, yeah. <laughs> At least smile if we don't laugh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gaga Logger, the finance, uh, finance director of Cadbury and PLC. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right, so talking about finance now, let's look at how the market fared yesterday. I don't think it was, uh, oh, well, something to rejoice over, but it was down 0.48%. That's uh, for the NGX at 98,228 uh, Five zero and the market cap is still around 55. Funny number, 55, 55 right there. Trillion there. That's what we had. Top trades again, uh, dominated by the Fugas, the big guys, UBA and Access Co. Transco and Transco's results has been uh, looks really, really good. But there was a lot of profit taking in the market yesterday, uh, especially in the Fugas. I think the Fugas were down at the close of trade yesterday well as i always tell you at 1 p.m you have more uh, into market today to be with anete edit I, I believe he has a whole lot of conversation waiting for you at 1 p.m but on the whole we have 55 minutes of global business journey on business incorporated you don't want to miss it join me then back to the sunrise daily studios